What's going on everybody? I'm back today. We're going to do a video response for Mark Santucci. Uh, Mark has been doing videos for about four months now and I really like his channel. It's, it's fun because it encompasses a couple things that I enjoy. Uh, sports cards and music, which uh, uh, interestingly enough, like when I was a kid, I collected sports cards and then once I got into high school, I, I stopped for a while in high school and college and the thing that I was kind of into in that period of time when I wasn't collecting was actually music. I was very into getting a lot of CDs and played the guitar, played bass, and uh, did a lot of that. Went to concerts, and that was kind of my thing. And so, uh, and then you know, I got older, I got married, had kids, settled down, and uh, now I'm kind of back into cards. And I still love music, but I'm back into cards too. So it's kind of two things that I really enjoy. And so uh, I am excited to do this for Mark. Um, we need to get Mark to 100. He's sitting at, uh, I believe, 65 right now. And uh, I just wanted to see if we could uh, get, a, get a push to get Mark up to 100. Uh, it's a great, great channel. He's a good dude. And I, I want to support him in his, uh, in his channel. So the first part of this is going to be the cards. Um, the rival, I chose to focus on the Jazz just since I live out in Utah. And uh, that's kind of my local team, so I wanted to do the Jazz. And I thought about rivalries, and I started thinking, okay, instinctively I want to say, oh, the Lakers. We can't stand the Lakers out here. You know, we've had our playoff battles with them. They've beat us. We've beat them. Uh, but we're not in the same division. I don't necessarily think the Lakers would consider us rivals to them, really. Um, I think the Lakers are probably a lot of people's rival but they wouldn't feel the same about us that we feel about them, probably. So I started thinking, okay, I want to do the Lakers, but I'm not going to do the Lakers. So I started really thinking, okay, somebody within the division. And I just thought, you know what, geographically, this makes sense. And there's some recent history here as well. The Denver Nuggets, okay. So um, as a Jazz fan, um, I can't stand the Nuggets. Um, I feel like they're kind of this little brother team that sort of flares up every so often and and then they kind of have these playoff battles and, and whenever they have these playoff battles and when both teams are good it's fun but it kind of opens up those old wounds a little bit and then you kind of realize like oh yeah yeah you know we get hung up on the Lakers but then you kind of remember why Denver is kind of this pesky rival and and it, it, it's fun but but it is it's a rivalry there I feel like and so that's the that's the one I picked for the purpose of this video and so the first card that I want to share with my uh, collection that is of the Nuggets is David Thompson. And uh, this is the one, if you watch my recent videos, you remember I picked this up in Arizona on my recent trip down there. And that is his rookie card from, I believe it's 7576 Tops. And uh, here's another Denver Nuggets OG, Dan Issel. Whenever I think of the Nuggets, I often think of Issel because uh, he was a great player there, and he also was a coach for them as well. So he's been involved in their franchise for a long time. And I'll kind of try to go oldest to, you know, kind of the older guys to the new guys. Not really oldest to newest because I'm out of order here. How about this? Larry Brown, 71-72 tops rookie. Uh, Larry Brown, the great coach, also played for the Denver Rockets. I guess that's not the Nuggets technically. The uh, Nuggets were in the ABA, but uh, that's a Denver card. We'll throw it in there. Denver's Denver right now for the purposes of this. This is a NC State card, but again, just uh, a cool David Thompson that I had in my collection. This is a by the letter auto. It's kind of interesting signed on the S like that. Uh, numbered out of 75. So that's a cool auto of the great David Thompson. He was an awesome player. Fun to watch the old videos of the slam dunk contest. <clears throat> this is a guy that, this is more my era of when I remember the Nuggets uh, as a kid. It was like Alex English. Um, great player. I wanted to show his rookie card, but he is an Indiana Pacer on that card. It's not a Denver Nuggets card. But then I slip a Denver Rockets card up here. I saw Denver on there and I just grabbed it thinking, oh yeah, because I want to say, I think he coached Denver Nuggets, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I could be wrong. Larry Brown's coached everywhere. Anyway, let's just keep this thing going. <laughs> so anyway, here's another guy that was fun to watch as a kid. Lafayette Fat Lever. I got the Relic Auto 
of Fat Lever. Here's another one. This is just a relic of his, but it's like a two color out of 25. And I love those old school, like that logo, like with the city skyline and the rainbow. I, Those are just awesome. And to me, that is like the classic Nuggets Uni. I, I really, that was just the, the Nuggets jersey of my childhood. Uh, the first jazz game I ever attended in person as a kid was against the Denver Nuggets in like 1989 at the Salt Palace. And they were rocking these unis here. And uh, I, I just, I love them, man. For me, that's just a classic look. I was glad that they did come back to a variation of this jersey. But uh, yeah, recent history with the Jazz and the Nuggets. So as I show these, I'll kind of try to recap this. Let's get this Poser Rockets card out of here. I don't think that really counts as a Nuggets card now that I think about it. Shouldn't have put that one out. We'll put my tumble there. Um, so a, a couple years ago in the bubble, the Jazz were up in the series um, I want to say 3-1, going off memory here, uh, and they like totally choked and blew it and lost the series to the Nuggets. Um, epic meltdown, brutal, brutal loss, and, uh, you know, and that just kind of, uh, reinvigorated the rivalry, you know, um, there's been, I, I, you know, for me, the big one I think about is the 94... 90, yeah, I believe it was, yeah, it was the 94 playoffs. Um, Denver was the eight seed. And if you remember watching like the old NBA on NBC games, when they would do the intro, they always played that clip of Matumbo laying on the floor on his back in Seattle on the ground, clutching the game ball after the Nuggets eliminated the Supersonics in that first round series. And that was back when the first round was a best of five. And a lot of people kind of speculated that that might have been one of the reasons why they did away with that five game first round series and went to the full seven gamer just because the, uh, you know, it, it kind of lessens the likelihood of an upset like that. And uh, Denver knocked them out. And Seattle, I remember watching the Sonics that year. I mean, they had Dell of Shrimp. They had just gotten from the Pacers. He was coming off a like six man of the year, you know, a couple all star game appearances. I mean, Detlef was really good. They had Kemp and Gary Payton and, uh, you know, Derek McKee. They had, they had a good team. And, uh, you know, I remember going to a couple of the Jazz and Sonics games that year and, and being really impressed with Seattle and thinking they were going to win it. They, they looked really, really good. And then when Denver knocked them out, I was floored. So the Jazz got Denver in the second round that year and the Jazz ended up beating them, but man, it was a dogfight. And uh, I can't remember if it went seven. It, it went like either six or seven. It was a long series. And, um, and, and, you know, and it was just like there was a big deal that in one of the games in Salt Lake, the owner, um, you know, the late Larry Miller, he got into uh, uh, kind of a, a verbal altercation with some Nuggets fans um, at the game. And it just, you know, it, it was just a heated, heated deal. And uh, the Jazz did end up winning the series, but it was not an easy win. And, uh, you know, and the rivalry uh, it just keeps keeps going. So, um, anyway, we'll keep running through this. A few modern guys, and then I'm going to jump into the second part of this. Jamal Murray. Uh, this guy's a fun player to watch. I'll be curious to see how he... Oh, kind of get some focus there. GMA 10 on the Don Russ rookie. See how he comes back from that knee injury. And then how about the Joker? Reigning MVP of the league. I got a couple of shiny ones of him. This is a GMA 10, and this is called the Purple Shock Prism. And then how about, let's get some Nuggets. Uh, we'll get a full Nuggets card run up here. We'll, we'll get the My House up there as well, the purple. So those are some of my favorite Denver Nuggets cards from my collection. Um, you know, I say like, oh, I can't stand the Nuggets. I hate the Nuggets. I mean, I... You know, it, sports hate, right? I mean, I don't, I don't hate them, but, um, but it, it's definitely a, it's definitely a passionate rivalry between the two teams, and so it's, it's fun to see, fun, fun when both teams are good. Um, I did want to show one card before I dive into the music angle of this, and this is just because Mark is a huge Dr. J fan. I wanted to show my Dr. J playing era PSA signed card there, just. Uh, Kind of show that he is a huge Julius Irving fan, so I wanted to get a chance to bust that Irving out. And then the next part, uh, I'm gonna kind of run through this quick. So we're already at the 10 minute mark. 
uh, he wanted us to share some of our favorite guitarists. So bass players don't count, I was told. I wanted to vote for Cliff Burton of Metallica. Um, so I'll just kind of throw him out there. Amazing guy. I like Les Claypool. He's another amazing bass player. I used to be a bass player, so I love bass players. Um, and uh, so so those are some of the guys that I love to, to listen to and still do. And uh, But I love guitar as well. Guitar is awesome. And I want to share a few of my favorite guitarists. And so I, let me pull the, I'm just going to show the, I got like the price tag residue on the front of this jewel case. So it's not as good. Take the jacket out. My first one, how about Eddie Van Halen? Um, just, this is the cover of the 1984 album. Um, Eddie Van Halen is just an incredible guitarist. If anybody who listens to rock, you know, will be familiar with Eddie and his work. He is just amazing. He, you know, again, he was very famous for the uh, the two hand tapping on the you know on the neck. If you listen to uh, Eruption and some of those other songs that uh, that he does that in, just fantastic stuff. Uh, love Eddie Van Halen. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. The next one I want to share is another guy who was just awesome, old school. Again, Jimmy Page. This is a Led Zeppelin. This is the Zoso uh, CD. Um, love Jimmy Page. His uh, his guitar work is just a lot of fun to listen to as well. Uh, this is the guy that as a kid I really probably listened to the most. Um, just because I love this band, Metallica. Um, as a 90s kid, I, I just couldn't help but love Metallica. All my friends love Metallica. I love Metallica. And so we just jam these guys all the time. And Kurt Hammett is fantastic this guy i mean you listen to any any metallica album there is just some incredible guitar solos on there uh he, he's fun to listen to and then the next one that i wanted to share this guy he's a, this is a little bit of a dark horse maybe for some but if you're a rock fan you will know this guy and in fact he is kurt hammett's former guitar teacher how about joe satriani surfing with the alien if you're not familiar with Joe Satriani, check him out. He is also from the Bay Area. And I believe his students included Kurt Hammock and I want to say Steve Vai as well, former White Snake guitarist. And uh, he was with White Snake for a minute. He wasn't with them for the full stretch of their run. He had a solo career as well. I, I thought it was Vai. I could be wrong. But anyway, Joe Satriani is awesome. Uh, track four on this CD is called Always With Me, Always With You. Uh, it's just guitar. It's just awesome. He's really, really good. So those are my four that I wanted to share. Mark, thank you for the opportunity. If you guys aren't familiar with Mark's channel, again, go give him a look. Uh, he's got a great channel, great cards, and great musical insight, great musical taste, I might add. And uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.